Oh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's, uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here, okay? Um, you can reach the ministry by calling 475-300-3850. Also, the ministry's website will be on the screen so that that way you can see how to reach the ministry by the internet. Listen, this is going to be a very powerful show. Let's not play. Let's get into this. And God bless you. And again, I'm Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the Word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850, hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Last time on the Word of God through Jesus Christ, street and our retelecast. In Ephesians 6, four classes of demons. The first one are principalities, which is from the Greek word it means arche, beginning. chief. Arche, our chief. The next demon. class of demons which are called powers, which in the Greek the word is exousia, and these are the powers or the authority or the weight, especially uh, moral authority, influence, uh, also in a quasi-personal sense, derived from later Judaism of a spiritual power and hence of an earthly power. So when it comes to demons, these are the powers, the authority, the weight. These demons, the powers, of hell. Those are the muscle of hell. Those are the force of hell. That's when you see hell at its very best, when the powers come. When you see something blow up and by the time it's done, there's nothing there. When you see an area with a, a storm come through there and tear up that whole area and leave all kind of destruction, that's a power that did it. Actually, the angel of destruction is a powerful demon, very powerful demon, and uses lesser demons to cause destruction. You, you, don't, you don't understand. The angel of death will tell a power to go and exercise the hellish agenda. Some of your families are tore up. Why? Because there are demonic powers in their life. Some of them are dabbling in witchcraft. Some of them are dabbling in divination. Some of them are dabbling in rebellion against God, living unnatural lifestyles that God never intended for humans to live. The second heaven. That's what it means. The second heaven. When you go outside and you look up and see the clouds, the birds, that's the first heaven. But there's a second heaven between the first heaven and the third heaven where God lives. There's a second heaven. And that's where the territorial demons, thank you Lord, that's where the territorial demons sit at. They just govern. They're ruling demons. Gabriel told Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, that when he was coming into the earth realm with the answer, 
to Daniel's vision when he got to the the, the the prince of Persia that was a ruling demon that sat over Persia and they fought. You see this? They fought. When angels and demons, elect angels and demons fight, there's a clash in the heavens. It interferes with nature. It could be thundering, lightning, rainstorms, all of that. Sometimes the thundering is real heavy. There's a lot of people say, that's God talking. A lot of times those are angels fighting. Watch this. When you're fasting and you're praying and you're asking God to do something, he sends the angel to come with the blessing and the answer. And as the angel is coming into the earth realm, you're standing still. The angel is coming to you bringing the answer. And what happens is there's a demon that has stopped that angel. Fight him. Block him. The territorial demons, the rulers of the darkness of this world, they will operate under the authority of the powers who's operating under the authorities of the principalities who are empowered by Satan. So the devil is the one actually playing all these parts and he is empowering these classes of demons. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. But you're already judged by taking that rainbow and, and perverting it. <laughs> Lastly, Jesus said that the Comforter, he will reprove the world of judgment. Why? Because the prince of this world is judged. Who's the prince of this world? Satan. No, he not. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter four. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna start at verse one. Brother Paul wrote Therefore, seeing we have received mercy, we faint not. You're talking about concerning ministry. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, that's being accountable, how we walk before men, how we act before men, how we treat the brethren, how we carry ourselves as ministers in front of men but before God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If you can't understand that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh, it's because you're lost. If you can't understand the importance of the gospel and if you're not convinced, that you should give your life to Jesus Christ right now, then it's because you're lost. Then verse four, let me read verse three again. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse four he wrote, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So what he's saying is, if your minds were not blinded, then you wouldn't have given your life to Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. What image? The physical image? No. No. Mm -mm. In his physical image, he's known as the son of man because he looked like us. But inside that body is God. John chapter 14, 
there was a conversation that went on between Jesus and his disciples. I'm going to start at verse 1. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So here Jesus is not considering the robbery to be equal with God. He's saying you can't believe in the Father and not believe in me, and you can't believe in me and not believe in the Father. You believe in God also, believe in me equally. <laughs> Verse 2, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Those of us that are saved, there's a place waiting for us. Jesus went to prepare a place for us. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Just the rapture he's talking about. He go and prepare that place. He going to come back and get us, those of us that are saved. And those that are not saved, when he come back to get the church, you will not see him when that happens. Oh, you'll see him, but not then. Because the dead in Christ will rise first. And those that are still alive when he come back are going to be caught up with them in the clouds and go away with the Lord. But the unsaved, you're not going to be resurrected yet. You're not going to see this. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in that first resurrection. Jesus said, verse 3 again, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Verse 5, Thomas, who's doubting Thomas, saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Follow me. Do what I do. Live like I live. Talk like I talk. Be like I be. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life. But if Jesus carried his cross, we got to carry ours. He is the truth. Everything we need to know about God is in Jesus Christ. Stop trying to think, let me get myself together first, and then I'll give my life to the Lord. You can't do that. How are you going to bargain like that with God? Lord, after I get myself together, then I'll come to you. You'll be left. You can't do that. Because it is not you who can correct you. Because if you could correct you, you wouldn't be messed up now. I am the way, verse 6, John 14, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. By who? Jesus. Not by Thomas, uh, uh, Charles Taze Russell, who made the Jehovah Witness cult. Not by Joseph Smith, who made the Mormon cult. Not by Catholicism, which is another cult. Yes, I said it. The Pope is not the right, the, the successor of Peter, nor is he infallible. Infallible means you don't get sick. Infallible means you live on, on a, you're never wrong. But sin and sickness are connected. Uh, most people get sick because somehow they have sin. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Verse 7, Jesus said, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, from now on, from hereafter, ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. He said, show us the Father, we'll be satisfied. Jesus saith unto him, John 14, verse 9. Have I been so long time with you, and yet 
Hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Jesus said, I've been with you all this time and you don't know me? You, you don't know who I am? Look at the things I did. Who could do that? Who could walk on water? Who can give sight to the blind? Some people say, well, Jesus, he did it. Uh, he asked the Father. No, he didn't. You'll never read what Jesus said, Father, help me do this miracle. No, he did it. Watch this. In verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, meaning that flesh, not of himself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So now there's people walking around, as the Jewish people would say, Meshuggah, thinking that I'm going to do greater works than Jesus. I, ain't, I have not seen one person yet. I haven't even seen it on the news, not even on the internet, and sure I haven't seen it when I walk by or ride by waters, or even when I'm fishing. I have not seen one person walk on water yet. Some people say, well, magicians do it. No, they don't. See, now, now that's a whole different story because there's a certain level of contact with Satan that a person can have and be that skilled in trickery or in feats, not exploits, feats. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And he specifically called him by name. Because if Jesus would have said, come forth, everybody in that grave would have got up and came forth. But he said, Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. So it's not that a person would do greater works than Jesus by quality. What Jesus meant was instead of him being the only one doing it, now there be many doing the works that he did. Now that takes a certain level of faith that we, apart from him, don't have. Jesus said in verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. See? It's still him doing the works. He'll be empowering us to do the works. Whatsoever you ask using my name, that will I do. He'll do it. Not us. So when you see those people who knocking people down when they pray, oh, boom, and knock you down, and then some fool laying there on the ground, writhing and going all crazy, and people are going, oh my goodness, that minister is so powerful. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. Because Jesus didn't do that. He didn't do that. Jesus, all he got to do is speak, and it's done. We have the privilege of prayer. And when we pray, asking anything in his name, in Jesus' name, it is done. First Corinthians chapter three. And for the record, read John 
chapter 14, verse 14 as well. 13 and 14 go together. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. No. 1 Timothy. I'm sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. This is the scripture, the Lord lead me to give Jehovah Witness, and they run out of the house because they can't explain this, and neither can that dude in Waterbury, the psychology major, psychiatry major. He can't explain it either because, again, he said there's no trial in God. This verse says, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, and without controversy, no meaning no matter what you say, great is the mystery of godliness. Then it says, God was manifest in the spirit. I mean, excuse me, God was manifest in the flesh. Manifested means made to appear. He, was, he appeared in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, meaning the Holy Ghost kept that body right. Seen of angels, mean now the angels seen God acting out the plan of salvation in his disguise of a man. The name of that flesh was called Jesus, which meant Savior. Hmm. Preached unto the Gentiles. The word of God. The expression of God. The computation of God. The bottom line of God is Jesus Christ. The Savior. That was preached to the Gentiles. To people that wasn't Jewish. To the Gentiles. God was so merciful, he preached unto the Gentiles the word of God, which is the plan of salvation. He was believed on in the world. There's many that believe. And after this, after the people who were supposed to believe and predestined to believe, after they believed, he was received up in the glory. So God came here, did that, and left. He kept it moving. God the Father was inside God the Son, and he is God the Holy Ghost. Not three separate, but three in one. The triune God. You can't go to the Son lest the Father draw you, and you can't go to the Father lest you go through the Son, co-equal. And the Holy Ghost, He's the one that brings you. He's the one that seeks you out and convinces you and ministers to you and convicts you and brings you. Now, it's time to pray because we're getting ready to close. I just heard, I was getting ready to go further, but I just heard God say, mm -mm, that's enough. Wrap it up. And I got to do what he say. i like to ask you to do something. Then the Lord going to lead me to pray. Pay attention to this. Because again, when you look outside and you see them thunderstorms and it's an abnormal thunderstorm, abnormal rain, abnormal lightning, remember this. A lot of times, a lot of times, angels, are up there fighting with demons. Because when angels come into the earth realm with the blessing, demons try to stop them. If you have the gift of discernment, if the Lord bless you to see in the spirit realm, you'll see the power of Satan interfering with people getting saved. With people giving their life to the Lord. Sometimes God will use you to intercede 
for those who can't fight for themselves. Because God wanted to deliver. He would have all men to be saved. But the truth is, everybody's not going to be saved. The straight and narrow road is the one many not going to be able to go on. But the road to destruction is wide. The road to hell is wide. Jesus said there will be many that find that. Many. This is my prayer list. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven things up here. Do you have any prayer requests? Write them down on a piece of paper. And please be quick because we don't have a lot of time. And if you, if you don't have paper or pencil near you, then just remember. Just say it where you are right now between you and God. Tell them what your prayer request is. Now, before you start giving him a list, I'm going to read James chapter 4, verse 1. We got to pray. See, God is so good because there was a scripture he gave me earlier, and now I see him bring me back to it. James chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, James, who was the Lord's brother, he wrote, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Wait a minute, don't run with that. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. Meaning even when you do ask, you don't get it because you want to glorify you. You don't want to glorify God. Scripture says after that, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So again, you come to God, you got to give stuff up. Down in verse 8, James wrote, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. One minute you want to serve God, the next minute you don't. One minute you love God, the next minute you don't. One minute you want to work, walk with God, and you want God to walk with you, and the next minute you don't. You want to do what you want to do, yet you want to say, Lord, Lord, I'm blessed. Whatever. You're playing with your own self. Because God is not mocked. Those that accept Jesus Christ as their Lord. Y'all need to look that up. Lord and Savior. They are those that are children of God. And God hears their prayer. When you see all this going on, angels from heaven are coming into the earth realm to bring to God's children the answer that they're praying about. Ephesians chapter 1. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Verse 3. Paul wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, in the spirit realm. He's already given us the blessings. Our blessings are spiritual, uh-oh, before they become natural. Those of us waiting for God to bless us with our spouse, when he show us this is your wife or that's your husband, it's already been declared in heaven. And if you are in touch with God, that's why you see it. Well, my, my, the one God said is my wife, or that God says my husband, they don't see it. 
That's because they need to get in God's face. They need to get in the Lord too. They need to stop everything they're doing and start spending time with God. Why? In, in, in Revelation chapter 4, and this is, this is so important. Revelation chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 11. The scripture says, this is what John wrote, Thou art, meaning art, worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Your life don't belong to you. Christ died for you. The least you could do is give your life to him. You got to let go of the world. You got to come out from among unsaved. Family and friends. Oh, well, I'll be lonely. I know. They'll be mad. So what? If you get right with God, then you could direct them to Christ and win souls for him, and then you'll get rewards in heaven when you get there. Because if, if you don't live for him, if you don't give up, now I hope I can find the scripture. Oh Lord, come on. Oh, I wish I had my strong. I really don't like these concordances. That's in these Bibles. I really don't because a lot of them are not good. Let's see. I like to not just tell nobody. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Luke 14. Praise God, that served that purpose. Verse 26. And this is what Jesus said. Let me go to verse 25. And there, were, there went great multitudes with him. And he turned, Jesus turned and said to them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Then he said, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. So when he said hateth there, he don't mean like I hate you. He means to love less. You got to love the Lord more than you love your family, than you love your children, than you love your spouse, than you love you also. Because if you don't, you can't be his disciple. This Christian walk is about self-denial. It's not about self. It's not about self. And sometimes people don't move fast enough as God wants them to move. So God has to use someone to pray them through. Because they're not on the right mark. We all get there sometimes. We all need people to pray for us. And I believe, as the Lord said, with, okay, Lord. He said, go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, and then we're going to go to Isaiah, and that's going to be it. 1 John chapter 5, 
verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So when you pray according to God's will, he hears you. That's the only prayer he hears. And if you're and if if he hears you, you're gonna get what you ask for. Why? First John 3:22 says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. When you please God, he blesses you. You don't please him, he don't. Now, if you look at Isaiah, and this is what we're closing with, because we got to pray and rebuke the devil. Isaiah 65, one of my favorite scriptures also. Verse 24, God said this, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Okay, Lord. One more time, got to close with Daniel. Just to line it up. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Actually, verse 11. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand up right, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Now this was Gabriel, the angel, talking to Daniel, telling him I was sent. So Daniel, pay attention. And then in verse 12, De Gabriel said, then said he unto me, this is what Daniel said, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. He said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Gabriel was coming with the answer. That ruling territorial demon over Persia blocked him. They were fighting. He was blocking Gabriel, actually. And they were fighting. Gabriel called Michael, who's the captain of God's heavenly army. He's the captain of God's heavenly army. I'm looking for a scripture. If I can't find it, then praise God. I got to stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Nope, I don't see it. Is it Judges? Well, nope, apparently not. Well, Michael, the captain of God's heavenly army. He's a fighting angel that protects God's people. He came because Gabriel called him, and Michael was anointed to fight the prince of Persia and beat him while they were throwing each other around and clashing. All of this stuff going on. Gabriel slipped through, came into the earth realm, 
and shared with Daniel what God wanted him to know. I got my prayer list. I hope you got yours. Now let's rebuke the devil and pray. Sisters, cover your head. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5, please cover your head. That means you're a submissive vessel. You're not dominant and rough and rowdy, but you're submissive, soft, and meek like God said. Brothers, if your head is covered, take whatever's on your head off because you are the head. You're made in the image of God. You have headship. Now let's pray. Now before we start asking God for stuff, first we're going to ask him to forgive us for our sins. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Because we do sin, Romans 3, verse 10, and verse 23. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you asking you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and faults and wrongs. We ask you to forgive us, Lord, for any and everything that we have said, done, thought, and felt that's not pleasing in your sight. We ask that you forgive us for the errors and the mistakes that we made. Forgive us for the things that we just think about that's not pleasing to you. Times that you wanted to lead us this way and we went that way. Please forgive us. We ask that you forgive us. Wipe the slate clean. Because we are only mortal. There's nothing supernatural about us. Lord, in my hand, I'm holding my prayer request that I need you to work out the people and things and subjects on this list. We all need you. I need you to work it out. My brothers and sisters that are standing with me in prayer, you said in Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20, that when two or three gather together, touching and agree about anything on earth, there you are in the midst. And we know that you are so awesome, so omnipresent, that you can be everywhere at the same time. We can't explain it, but we believe it. My brothers and sisters that are praying right now, all of us that are praying according to your will, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, we know that you hear us. And since we know you hear, you hear us, then we know we have whatever we ask for. You yourself said in the book of Isaiah, and we're going to stand on this, chapter 65, Verse 24, you said, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. So you already answered. You already answered our prayers according to what your word said. We believe you. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So you're going to let us speak anyway because we got to talk. Prayer is a spoken thing, not a thinking thing. So we got to talk. You will answer before we call. While we are yet speaking, you will hear. Father, lead me in this prayer. On behalf of my brethren, and myself, we have to rebuke the devil. Satan, we bind you by the power of the Holy Ghost. We bind you in the earth realm because you're already bound in heaven. We plead the blood of Jesus against you. We command you to go back to the pit of hell from where you came, Matthew 25, 41, and we lose all of our stuff. I lose mine, my brothers and sisters lose theirs. We lose all of our stuff from your grip that we're praying about. And we plead the blood over our stuff as a covering that you can't touch it. 
or you'll be saved. And you know you don't want to be saved. You can't be saved. You're the enemy of God, and that's that. So we plead the blood over our stuff after we snatch it back from you. And we forbid you to mess with our stuff again. Every demon that works for you, it don't matter what their name or rank is, because there's too many of them. It don't matter what their name is. We cast them out. Any demon sent by you to hinder our prayer requests, to go against our prayer requests, to mess with our prayer requests, in Jesus' name, we cast them out. According to Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. We cast them out. We command them to go back to the pit of hell from where they came. And we loose our prayer request from their grip. And we plead the blood over our prayer request as a cover. In Jesus' name. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. And Lord, we thank you for the victory. Now, Father, according to Matthew 12, when an unclean spirit leaves and travels over dry ground looking for rest and can't find her, and they come back. They said, let me go back to the house I just came out of. So they might try to come back. So before that happens, in Jesus' name, we ask that you dispense holy, heavenly angels to come into the earth realm to stand where we just cast all them demons out of. We ask that you dispense holy angels to see about our prayer requests, to bring the answer like Gabriel did, to come and bring the answers to the prayers. It's getting hard for us, Lord, while you're blessing us to fast. But please answer the prayers. You said you would. You said before we call, you'll answer. You said that while we're speaking, you're here. We're holding you to your word. To your word, Father. You can't lie. Oh, glory to God. We're holding you to your word. Dispense holy angels to come in our life, to come right where we are, are right now. Everyone that I'm praying for on this list, dispense angels to their home and to where they are, to guard them, to surround them, to protect them, let nothing happen to them, usher them unto you to do what you say and protect us. I'm up here to protect us, anoint us, you anoint us, empower us, you empower us, Father, and assign angels to help us that are heirs to salvation. Hebrews 1 and 14. We thank you, Father, for hearing us and for answering us. And thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Well, I got to go. God bless you, and I love you so much. I really do. I really do. I don't know how late it is, but it's late. Enjoy this broadcast. Watch it again and again and again. Enjoy it in Jesus' name. And it all, it all is a work done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle, you going to apologize? Nope. You going to take anything back? Nope. Mm -mm. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strong. Everyone in the five-fold ministry are strong in their own right and not weak. And again, apostles are not soft. <laughs> the thought God gave me is pulling down strongholds isn't for amateurs, but if you were under this prayer and you're your, your faith is not as strong as some of ours are, and you joined your faith with ours, God is going to answer your prayer. It's already done. The ministry's prayer line is 
850, it's a 24 hour number. You can call anytime and every time. If God is using me to do other things and you get the voicemail, leave a detailed message, phone number, purpose for calling. On the screen, there's a cash app link. Let God use you to sow into the ministry because we do street and outreach ministry, helping the lost, helping single mothers that are struggling to have children but no husbands. They need diapers, they need, they need pampers, they need bottles, they need pacifiers. Come on, let God use you to help. Suppose it was your child or your daughter and, and she had a child and she didn't have the means to buy stuff for the child. Wouldn't you want help? Well, let God use you to be a blessing to the ministry. Share through the Cash App link. And in the description of where it says, you know, the reason you're sharing it, write street ministry. All right? The Cash App will give you a receipt. God bless you. You could do a recurring donation, which is every month or bi-monthly or tri-monthly. That's on you. Or one-time donation. That's on you share whatever the Holy Ghost put in your heart because he's fair and he knows how he used the ministry and the things that the Lord used to share will go somewhere in the ministry to do something for ministry work. God bless you. I love you in Jesus name and don't get caught up in the theatrics at all but I gotta go. God bless you. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. And all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food for my table.
Satisfied. 